guys, welcome back. Now, before we're ready up for our next match, we're gonna see what you guys and girls are saying over on Twitter. And earlier today, we asked you, which role do you think will be the most impactful in the LCS summer split and why? And here's some of your answers. Our first tweet is from Ad Shanigan. Support. Ever since support started roaming and applying more vision, they're becoming crucial to snowballing lanes. Yeah, definitely. It's a trend we've seen over the last maybe six months to a year. A lot of support changes, new support champions, uh, and even just weird shifts in meta, how we've seen Alistair come back. So there certainly is a lot of emphasis on the support role right now. I want to see more players pick up Bard because then we see a real uh, different shift here in the support meta. And I know Crepo is looking for the same thing. Yeah, definitely. Only seen one <laughs> here in the LCS, uh, ULCS so far. Our second tweet is from at GameGool. It's clearly all about the jungle. Every game will be a race to clear camps, stack health, and come into lanes like a wrecking ball. But then, We've seen, uh, well, Nidalee's, Lee Sin's, and a lot of Evelyn's as well. Yeah, and it's been a bit hit and miss. Evelyn with her passive pressure on the game. Some teams are using it well, some teams aren't. But I think that's going to be the key thing, uh, is when you have players that are playing junglers like Evelyn, it's a team effort. It is a very impactful role, but if your team aren't winning, it's very difficult to jungle. All right, the last tweet is from at Saberwolf. EU has always been the promised land of mid laners and still is. The meta shifted focus to other lanes, but mid is still big. Something we've been talking about so much, multi-threat teams are are what it comes down to, but we have seen some mid laners really, really making their mark still here. Uh, first game of the day, Elements Giants, case in point. Yeah, case in point for sure. I mean, uh, Pepinara looked great against Froggen, and Froggen in other games is looking great himself. I mean, it, that's the thing is when you look down all 10 uh, teams here, you can look at their mid laners and say, they could have a great game. And some games you'll say, oh, maybe, maybe not so much this one. So there's a lot of impact, but it's also uh, a very kind of 50-50 role right now. It's either, either dominate or get dominated for a lot of it. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys writing into us. If you got more to say, remember, there's always at LL Esports and the hashtag LCS. We will always listen to you. Now, as we speak, SK and Origen are setting up on stage for their first clash of the summer split. Let's take a look at the lineup for SK Gaming on the blue side for this one. Freddy122, Svenskar and Fox, Candy Panda, and Rated, and their coach, Lukas Schenke. Um, now, the big change, of course, coming in here for SK Gaming is Candy Panda returning to that lineup. And even though they went 0-2, they did have a pretty good early game versus Fnatic, which we thought would be an incredibly hard game for them with a the Bard Callista, which is something that requires a lot of mechanics and a lot of communication. They did pretty well in the early game. They did do pretty well, and a lot of it was because of N-Rated and, and Sven Skeren. And one thing I wanted to kind of touch on right now is Sven kind of playing, going back to the Nidalee, and it's interesting because it's something we're expecting now from the jungle role. We're seeing it in, in other uh, regions as well. Now that we're getting a lot of Gragas bans, Rek'Sai bans, and Sejuani got nerfed. We're going to this A-class tier, and it's different for a lot of different junglers. And Sven Nidalee is clearly one of his his jungle A-class picks. The problem with A-class picks is there's a reason they aren't completely dominant in the game. And we saw last week Sven getting caught out after the early game on his Nidalee. And junglers like Lee, like Nidalee, like Eve are going to be around, but they all have their weaknesses and teams need to adapt to that because they're not the same as the Gragas and Rek'Sai, who at most points in the game are very, very strong. Yeah, definitely. He decides to play like a tank when he is not really a yeah. tank, when he could be picking a tank. Uh, <laughs> quite interesting point for you because um, the question is then, if you say that those guys will be coming into the meta, the, the Nidalees of this world, into the A class, but if that's not something you're seeing at the landscape you're playing in, then should you jump the gun, or is that just a lack of adaptation? It, it's interesting because uh, clearly Diamond Prox is going that route first. Volibear is clearly in, we just talked about in his champion pool. It's interesting because, again, each one is going to have their different strengths and weaknesses. If, as a team, SK are playing very well with poke comps, with the Nidalee, and around that in scrims and in their practice, then by all means, I think the team should very well put themselves behind that. But if it's not working out, stick to what's working for other, for just a meta as a whole and look towards the picks the likes of Nunu, you put his ear in the middle lane and, and you know just like a Lee Sin perhaps on Sven as well we know he's played it before yeah we'll see what they decide to go with in this one because uh, well tall order they're up against Origen in this one and their lineup of course is so as amazing Expeke Niels Mithy and their coach Luduck looking very very strong in their LCS uh, debut and actually having the shortest game times as well coming in and just getting off to great starts in all these games yeah and the big thing for the Origen lineup sorry I always get paranoid before I try I and say it. I think we should just stop just saying yeah, it the way you I'm, want to. I'm just going to say origin. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But 
<laughs> oh, there are going to be people mad at me for that. But, uh, you know, the thing about their, their debut in the first two games was they weren't just winning. They were crushing. Their average game time is so, so low. But just in general, Origin are performing so well in the early game. You look at their stats when it comes to towers and dragons taken down pre-15. It, it's just so good for them. But it's all because they've got solid pick and ban phase behind it. And it just Origin as a whole are looking like such a very well-rounded team. Yeah, glad you mentioned it. The picks and bans coming in there, willing to take risks with the Vayne into Sivir. And Niels, as we said, MVP, making that one count as well to great success. And another aspect of that bottom lane, Mithy with his Alistar seemed unbeatable. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that was one of the games where we noticed that Alistair in Europe specifically was like, oh, this is this is <laughs> working thing. very, very well. We'd, we'd ha obviously had a couple of other regions playing it already, but uh, Mithy's certainly doing well in his uh, return to the pro scene. But I think one of the most intriguing things about Origin has been how level-headed they've stayed throughout this entire kind of ordeal of, you know, getting back into the LCS, getting themselves on the big stage. We had them here for the interview, and they seemed cool, calm, collected all the way through and it's a little bit different from what we kind of expected from ex Peke looking back at previous seasons. Well, uh, I feel like uh, ex Peke has been a player that now he's built his own team and he has to be the one also to get level headed in that and keeping all the players focused, which is happening. If we think about growth potential, it's quite interesting because we say they crushed week one, um, but you haven't really seen a style emerge because if you crush so well early and you get these objectives early off the kills you make happen, then you're not forced into making a late game plan as of yet. So it will be interesting to see if a team does push them a little farther, what they decide to grow into. Definitely. I completely agree with that. An interesting thing to note, I think it flashed up during the stats though, they're eight minutes faster than Fnatic yep. when it comes to closing out games. So Europe, you're going to have to try and hold on against uh, Origin if you want to look to pick up a win. Yeah, uh, it's quite interesting as well for them. Um, if we look at the damage distribution of their team, Xpeke is at the top there, Soaz is at the top there, Niels is obviously up there with that uh, vein, but we know that Amazing is able to carry and put a lot of power out as well if he has to be put in that position. So for them, that definitely bodes well in the era of multi-threats. Definitely, 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 definitely. And I'm looking forward to seeing whether Origin can keep playing around Soaz as well in that top lane because we've seen a little bit of adaptions. They've been flexing picks through mid, through top, uh, it's, you know, there's still a lot of questions for Origin, but they are really firing out some very strong answers to everything that's given to them. Yeah. Now, uh, although week one of the split may not have gone SK's way, their support in Radiant thinks a little room to rise will pay off for the team in the long run. We were gaining those 8-0 streak, and at, as soon as we had that, people started analyzing us way more, and just having that against you, working against you, is a ticking time bomb. So I would rather have a slower start, but steady but surely improve, make it to playoffs, and in playoffs show what we're capable of. Well, we'll have to find out whether or not SK have got enough time to improve upon their Week 1 performances. Their game against Fnatic was actually pretty good. And one thing to note for Inrated in particular, he has 999 career assists in the LCS. So with one more, he's going to hit the 1K. That's a lot of assists. Quite so. <laughs> we'll have to see as we jump into picks and bands in a minute or two. And Rated pulled out the bard last week for the first time. Phenomenal um, choice. I think his ultimates were particularly impressive. It didn't feel like he w it was used to the best of its ability. Maybe I'm being a little overly harsh because Sven, mm. of course, on that Nidalee, not the greatest of performances either. We need to see how SK fixed the mistakes they had from week one. Yeah, in terms of bard ulties, it definitely was all right. Couldn't get to follow up with his Q. Sometimes to his own merit, sometimes.